Hey, it's me, Hannah. I have declared this year to be the year of the con. I've never been to a proper fan convention of any sort, and I've only ever created cosplays just for my own joy. But this year, this year I'm going to at least one convention. <laughs> I've only bought one pass so far. I have lovingly been peer pressured into going to Katsukon 2024, which from what I understand is very cosplay heavy and is only a few weeks away. After chatting with some friends about what to expect and what I should do to prepare, I've decided to make this con weekend very vampire themed for no other reason than I've just wanted to cosplay a couple vampy characters. So we're starting with the Pale Elf himself and I'm going to kick off my con cosplay journey with Asterion from Baldur's Gate 3. Now Asterion has a number of different options when it comes to his outfits, but I'm gonna go with his official character art look, which is his default armor. Starting with his blue jacket with the purple placket and gold embroidery. There's probably a bunch of different ways I could have done this and probably easier ways too but I decided to just map out the shapes of the blue and purple panels on my mannequin and then drape some scrap fabric to create a pattern that way. I obviously wanted this jacket to be relatively form-fitting, so that's why I went this route. Once I knew where everything was going to line up, I cut out all the pieces in the blue fabric, as well as some red lining fabric, and the purple velvet for the collar, all with a half inch seam allowance. Let's get to sewing. So I'm using this gold piping bias tape to get that sort of effect in between each of the panels. And then I'm going to glue some of the leftover pearls from my last project uh, to the piping once I have everything else set. There's also this like small panel of leaf detailed fabric uh, on the sleeve just under the arm. This actually matches the fabric of the, I guess they are chaps, very ornate chaps. I ordered some fabric that I'm gonna have to dye that I think is gonna work really well for both the chaps and the sleeve detail. I'm gonna have to wait for that fabric to get here, so that might end up being in a part two. And then I also have this really pretty purple velvet for the, I guess the placket area on the jacket. This is where a lot of the embroidery is going to be. And I thought about and started the embroidery detail by hand. This would take me hours. I actually started shopping around for an embroidery machine, but those are so expensive. So a dear friend of mine is letting me borrow hers. In the meantime, I'm going to sew together the blue panels of the jacket and see how far we can get.
So I drove an hour to visit my friends Aaron and Morgan and borrow Morgan's embroidery machine. I had purchased some files from an Etsy shop, I'll link to it down below, and they worked out okay, but we had to do some guesswork about lining the different pieces up, and those machines still take a good amount of time to finish, so I was able to wrap up the sleeve details, but then I had to head home. Huge thanks to Morgan and Aaron. With their support, I had everything I needed to work on the sleeves when I got back. I basically just treated these embroideries as appliques and used some gold embroidery thread and a really tight zigzag stitch on my sewing machine to attach them directly to the sleeves, which I had already cut out using the stiffer blue fabric. When I realized that I wouldn't have access to Morgan's machine again before this video comes out, and that we're getting too close to KatsuCon for comfort, I decided to purchase a quilting slash embroidery presser foot to use on my sewing machine. So in terms of my process here, I started by printing the PDF version of the pattern I purchased and tracing it onto tearaway stabilizer. I stay stitched that to the purple fabric, which I had added stiff heat and bond stabilizer to without removing the paper. This made it way easier to embroider without needing an embroidery hoop to keep things taut. And then I dropped my feed teeth, set my stitch length to almost nothing, and adjusted my zigzag stitch width as I embroidered down the pattern. First panel done. This took me like six hours. I already don't have great posture, but this project might permanently damage my spine. This is not easy to do. My machine hates this thread, which is I believe embroidery machine thread, expensive embroidery machine thread at that. And I have to keep pulling it out of little tight spots on my machine. And it keeps getting bunched up and knotted and caught and <laughs> I probably have another at least 12 hours of embroidery ahead of me. And I'm I'm happy, I'm happy with how this looks. I'm pulling away the, the tear away stabilizer and it's looking good. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with how it's turning out. But I'm also happy that the actual like in-game description of Asterian's jacket is, despite the careful stitches, the gold embroidery on this padded doublet is slowly unraveling. Just like me. But that brings us to the next part of this build. This is padded armor, meaning I need to add some padding to it. Somewhere in here, I have some quilting material that I'm gonna use to achieve this quilted gambeson look. I'm planning on just cutting out like a big piece for each of the three panels of the, the vest part of the jacket. Two in the front, one in the back. That's what she said. <laughs> so I'll be adding that as a layer between the outer fabric and the lining. Then I'll treat it like a quilt. Then I'll treat it the way I assume you treat a quilt. <laughs> and just use my sewing machine to go over the seam lines to get that quilted effect. I wanna get this jacket to a good stopping point before you know I put up this video and I wanna finish it so I can get back to playing the actual game. Let's get to work.
that's a wrap on part one of my Asterian cosplay build. I realized that the back embroidery in the pattern that I bought off Etsy is not actually accurate. So I have to decide if I'm going to design something myself, try to get as close to accurate as possible, or just roll with the Etsy design. If I even get around to the back embroidery. I still have so much to do with less than two weeks left before the con. Yes, obviously for this jacket, it's not done yet. And also for the chaps and the shirts. This is, this is not the accurate shirt. This is just a shirt I have. <laughs> Though I could potentially do a Sarian's camp look with this. Not to mention I still have to style a wig and figure out my makeup. And ideally, I was hoping to get around to another cosplay or two. But my machine broke. My sewing machine is broken. I'm not sure if it was the embroidery, presser foot, and all of the work I put the machine through with that, or if it was this fabric with the vinyl piping I used for a little bit of a leather detail. I'm trying not to panic. There are still plenty of things I can do in the meantime that don't require a sewing machine uh, while I either go get it fixed or do a little research and hopefully upgrade to a potentially better sewing machine. So I apologize that I couldn't get this wrapped up for this video, but the technical difficulties were technical difficulty. That is hard to say. Knowing that there are details missing, knowing that uh, details unfinished, such as this gold thread is only on one side and that the bottom hasn't been actually shaped or sewn. There are maybe a little more than a few stitches away from this actually being wearable. And like I said, there's non-sewing related tasks for me to be doing surrounding this cosplay and others. So I am going to keep my chin up. But look, this is my first big cosplay build, like genuinely pursuing accuracy. It's okay if I fall short a little bit. In the end, I still feel like I've had so much extra time with this character and I'm not even playing the game. And that's really what this is for. It's my appreciation of this character and his, and his fashion that kept me excited and continues to keep me excited about this cosplay. I've really been enjoying the opportunities I've had to like jump online and work on cosplays together with friends or in person with Aaron and Morgan. And most importantly, I've been having fun puzzling this out and trying to get it as accurate as possible. And if you had as much fun as I did, it would mean the world to me if you would like and subscribe. And if you do, I will see you in two weeks from my next video. Take care.